Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about this relatively recent detection of a somewhat unusual radio signal that we've talked about a few months ago and a recent paper that potentially finds a pretty good explanation for what this actually was. At least the best explanation we have so far. And so I wanted to talk a little bit more about this particular signal, what was actually discovered a few months ago, and also talk about the explanation from this paper. But let's start with the detection of this unusual radio transient, originally found back in 2020, but recorded by the radio astronomers back in 2018. With the data coming from the Murchison Whitefield Array that you see right here, which is essentially a collection of various radio antenna located in Australia. And so back then, when the scientists were looking at some of the data and creating these beautiful radio maps, they've actually found something that they didn't expect. Something coming from the region you see right there. Or if you were to look at the Milky Way galaxy in the optical light, it would be right here. Something in this region was pulsating, producing a lot of brightness in radio waves, staying bright for approximately 30 to 60 seconds, but pulsating every 18.18 minutes actually being the brightest radio object located in the night skies at that point, specifically in the frequency of 70 to 215 MHz. And although obviously this is not the first time unusual radio signals were coming from somewhere out there in outer space, this was the first time ever that the scientists discovered something so extremely bright, but something that seems to pulsate extremely slowly and produce very unusual and very difficult to explain emissions that were just never seen before with this object eventually acquiring this relatively long name and becoming one of the bigger mysteries in radio astronomy. But I guess what made it even stranger is that after a few months of pulsating at regular intervals of just over a thousand seconds, it suddenly disappeared and never really reappeared ever again. And so because of this, this was that unresolved mystery of a very unusual radio signal that the scientists have been trying to resolve for almost two years. But, obviously, this is not the only radio mystery out there. As a matter of fact, we've talked about so many other radio mysteries in the last few years. And this is, of course, because the radio observatories and radio astronomy has actually improved so much now that we've been detecting a lot of things that nobody ever expected. We have things like fast radio bursts, we have things like orcs or odd radio circles, and a lot of other things we discussed on the channel. But, in this case, this signal was unusual for other reasons. So first of all, normally when we see periodic radio signals, we generally assume that it's maybe some kind of a pulsar. Essentially, a neutron star that spins at regular intervals, usually once every second or actually once every few milliseconds, and generally as it does so, it will then produce these jets visible from extremely far away, with the jets being in radio light. But the difference here is, well, you can see it right here. Normally, a pulsar spins very fast. This object spins super slow, every 18 minutes. At least according to these observations for a few months, where everything was repeating every 18.18 .18 minutes. And because of this, the initial assumption here was that, well, maybe it's some sort of a extremely highly polarized magnetar, or a neutron star with a very, very powerful magnetic field, the most powerful magnetic field in the universe, as a matter of fact which essentially was spinning very slow because of the magnetic field. And here it would be what's known as the ultra-long period magnetar, a type of an object that we've actually never seen before. And because light coming from this object was also highly polarized, the signs of a very powerful magnetic field coming from this region were clearly there. But one of the problems with the magnetar as an explanation was the fact that, well, first of all, there was no known mechanism to explain why it suddenly disappeared after a few months. And also that the actual emissions were just a little bit too bright for a typical neutron star. If this was a neutron star, the scientists expected it to be a little bit more dim. And on top of this, the suggestion here was that, well, whatever is generating these periodic signals seems to have very different process from a typical pulsar or a typical neutron star. It just didn't possess the same type of a signal we usually observe from pulsars we've discovered in a galaxy. And also, as a quick side note, this is not the only unusual repeating radio source coming from the region around the central galaxy. There are actually several different so-called GCRTs, or the Galactic Center Radio Transients, that have been found in the region where we normally expect the center of our galaxy to be. With some of them visible in this image right here, 
with this region here representing the actual center. But those radio signals are also different in their profiles and might be entirely different types of objects as well. So basically some other mystery we've discussed before and we'll talk about in some of the future videos. Which by the way is probably the reason why you should subscribe. And on top of this, this particular signal seemed to be a lot closer, approximately 4000 light years away from us, as opposed to 15 to 20,000 light years away as those other signals. But there was always this third explanation that the scientists kind of assumed at first, but weren't really sure about. In this case, it did not involve any neutron star, but involved what's known as a white dwarf, the same type of an object that our sun is going to become in a few billion years from now. Now, in theory, a white dwarf can actually have certain properties that can allow it to have very powerful magnetic fields, but also produce certain types of radio light. But the thing is, it was always sort of very theoretical. The actual observations were lacking. And there's actually only one potential object that might be a radio dwarf that was discovered a few years ago, the object we refer to as the white dwarf pulsar, but in this case, the mechanism by which it produces radio light and all of the emissions as you can see in this video, is very, very different. There's a binary system here, and it seems to actually affect the star next to it as well. Nevertheless, the system of AR Scorpii has always been that one potential source of unexplained radio light. But in this case, it was all powered by the partner star. So basically, this would be a binary system. Yet the observations from this particular region did not suggest any binary partner at least not through the emissions detected so far. Which leaves us with the only potential explanation that has been suggested but never found. So it could be that singular object, singular white dwarf, that possesses very similar to a typical pulsar features. Or, as the scientists have always referred to these, a white dwarf pulsar. An object that nobody has ever seen before, but also the object that nobody expected to be so extremely bright at least in radio light, it's not actually bright in visual light, and so even by looking at this with an optical telescope, it's very unlikely that we would see anything. And if this is such an object, it seems to possess an extremely effective way of converting the magnetic energy into radio light, and seems to do so much more effectively than any other object we've seen so far, including neutron stars. With the main reason behind the study, and the main explanation behind why this is a white dwarf and not a magnetar, being in regards to the polarized light detected coming from this object, the actual observations suggest that the magnetosphere here was very similar to a white dwarf, not to a neutron star, with the calculations focusing on what's known as the Lorentz factor, the concept from the theory of relativity that sort of focuses on how much, for example, time or length of an object changes depending on how fast it travels, or depending on how much the gravity sort of folds the time space around something. And in this case, we expect different observations from a neutron star compared to a white dwarf. With the new calculations suggesting that whatever it is, it's not as dense and as potent as a magnetar. Seems to be probably a white dwarf. And because white dwarfs are also generally a little bit brighter than neutron stars and in theory could be seen with a powerful telescope, by using some of the more powerful optical telescopes, including the James Webb telescope, it could become possible to maybe identify this object for sure, and more importantly, all of its other properties, including how it's able to generate the magnetic field and how it's able to produce these radio waves we're observing. And so in other words, we could prove all of this by conducting some of the more advanced optical observations of this particular region. But I guess until future observations or future analysis or possibly future studies, that's pretty much all we know right now it still seems to be a somewhat new radio mystery. A mystery that the scientists are hoping to solve in the next few years. Which means that we're going to be coming back and talking about this in some of the future videos. And so, until then, check out the paper in the description below, maybe subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.